Ah. Okay. Chapter three. Iron and steel will bend and bow. I screamed and ducked down when the pillar exploded. Ari grabbed me and dragged me back, spinning both of us around the edge of one of the other pillars. I stood there, heart hammering, back to stone, and face staring at Ari's Adam's apple as he shielded me from a volley of what sounded like... Weapons fire? I don't know why, I just find Ari's Adam's apple very aesthetically pleasing to my eyes. <laughs> like, ah, look at all those A's. Sort of? I didn't actually hear a weapon, just the sound of the building being damaged around us. Even sonic weapons made noise. But what about mind weapons? I couldn't understand what was happening. Caleb, who had dived behind some nearby rubble, pulled out a small handgun and fired back at our attacker. I clapped my hands to my ears, sending up a panicked prayer as everything spiraled completely out of control. The ground less than half a meter from me exploded, shooting a spray of stone flecks up towards my face. At the same time, the entire building shook as if it hit, as if hit from the outside. Instinct kicked in, and my body moved on its own. I had no idea where I was intending to run. I was just going to run. Away was as far as my brain got. Oh, his eyes be glowing. Ari ste stepped in front of me, placing one arm across my shoulders to pin me in place while he fended off any debris that would have struck me. It was the second time he was putting himself in harm's way to protect me. Aww. Though I wouldn't have been in harm's way in the first place if not for him. Not this time around. I flinched as the building shook again. Was someone outside attacking us too? But how? Why? It was too far beyond my ability to cope with or understand. I curled against Ari's chest as if making myself as small as possible would help. If he wanted to take the brunt of whatever was happening, I would let him. <laughs> A loud explosion rumbled through the floor and several more shots struck the ground just beyond the pillar. Caleb fired back, though it didn't seem to do much good. Is it just me, or is that a cyburst? It is not just you. Who even is that? What? Ari calmly placed a hand over my mouth. Shush. <laughs> <laughs> Will you shut up? They didn't exactly introduce themselves before they started flinging those things at us. He stopped berating me, only long enough to fire several shots at the attacker. I shoved Ari's hand off my face. Why are you shouting at me like that's my fault? And there are two of them now. One has a sonic rifle. There appear to be more of them outside. Not sure if they're from the same faction. Yeah. I noticed that when they started trying to bring the whole damn place down on our heads. The moment they get over the wall out there, we're done. Ari peered around the pillar. Those two are shooting at each other for the moment. Perhaps we should take the opportunity to flee. Flee where? You teleport and we might as well send up a beacon saying who we are and where we're going. What was the point of even coming here if we do that? For a moment it was so surreal, as if I was watching it all from the outside. Caleb and Ari were just having a conversation, while Caleb exchanged weapons fire with two people, one of who was apparently an Esper, shooting some sort of psi attack at us. I just couldn't get my head around it. How the hell did they find us anyway? An adept team of bishops, no doubt. Are you ever going to tell me what's happening? I let out another short scream as something hit the pillar Ari and I were behind sending a terrifyingly powerful vibration through my body. Never mind, not talking anymore. Ari, get her the hell out of here! I think it would be unwise to leave you alone. You cannot- Get the queen out of here, Vaughn! That's an order! Queen? N- No way. I hope you realize you do not outrank me. Ooh, look at those orange glowing eyes. Fancy. Damn it, Ari! Just do it! Caleb suddenly darted out from his hiding place to another pillar. To get a better vantage point from which to murder people, I assumed. It's not really murder if it's self-defense, though. In his defense. 
He fired off more shots, leaving me wondering why he was using a weapon and not whatever psi abilities he possessed. Who has the orange glowy eyes? Or do your eyes just glow whatever color your natural eye color is? And that has nothing to do with your rank. Ari sighed, and I had the strangest feeling this sort of situation had played out with them many times. That this was just every day for them. Oh... I need to get you to a safer location while they're distracted with each other. But I don't wish to attract attention, so we're going to run. Wait, what? He took my hand and, with a quick look around the pillar, dragged me from where we were to another pillar a short distance away. I ducked my head down and bit my lip to keep from screaming the entire way. Running around in a place where people were shooting at each other wasn't something I wanted to do again. From behind our new hiding spot, Ari scanned the area as if deciding on a path. I had a sinking feeling we were definitely doing that again. There is a corridor on the adjacent wall. If we can make it there, we should be safe. Why not just teleport like you did before? My teleportation ability leaves a distinctive distortion trail that can be tracked. Teleporting across the room will draw attention and fire. I had so many more questions, but no time to ask them. A shot from one of the others slammed into the pillar we had just left, taking a huge chunk off. If we had still been hiding there, we definitely would have been hurt. Ari checked quickly, then looked back my way. We're going. I nodded hesitantly, not really wanting to, but I didn't think I would get a choice. He grabbed my arm, and together, we darted from that pillar to a pile of rubble. Ari ducked behind it and pulled me to the ground with him. Oh, hello. Well, you look very cool. But as I went down, I caught a look at one of the people Caleb was fighting. A woman in black with some kind of breathing mask on her face. She slinked back out of the fractured rainbow light from above and into the shadows. Right as she winked out of sight, she looked our way. And maybe I just imagined it, but it felt like our eyes met. A shiver crawled down my spine. Then she was gone. Ari had seen her vanish as well. He crouched behind the debris, a frown passing over his face. A knight. This isn't good. A knight, which meant she could teleport like him. We weren't really safe anywhere in this room. Not when Caleb wasn't right next to us, prepared to shoot anyone who teleported to our location. Morgan, hold on to me. What? Well... I didn't actually have time to do it. Rather, Ari grabbed me, and once again, the world twisted and warped. Didn't really have a, have a choice. When I staggered out of... whatever you would call that sensation, we were right in front of the opening Ari mentioned before. Whoa. Well, that is a change in scenery. It opened into the yawning darkness. He shoved me in, tucking me against the wall just beyond the doorway. I thought you said we weren't doing that again! The situation changed. Stay quiet. His body was tense, as if he was watching to see if we'd be followed. But from where he was standing, the room we'd left wasn't even visible from where we stood. Thankfully, the knight appears to be preoccupied with Caleb and the other one for now. It doesn't appear that anyone is heading this way, though I can't be certain they aren't aware of which direction we went. The building shuddered again, sending a shower of dirt on us from above. Ari planted his arms on either side of me, and the air buzzed slightly with what I could only assume was psi energy. He managed to block most of the debris. Seconds later, Ari was pulling me further from the light and into the darkened corridor, but he glanced behind worriedly. I don't believe Caleb will hold out long alone. I bit back the sarcastic response to that, because, as angry as I was, I didn't really want Caleb to get hurt. Or anyone. I hoped no one got hurt. It was a stupid, childish hope that had absolutely no place here, though. We don't know how many are outside, either. A knight that can use Cyburst that strong is... unusual. Maybe... fairy, then? He seemed to be talking to himself more than me. But I hazarded a look up at him. What's a Psyburst? A psychic attack. You cannot be hit by one, Morgan. Because I'm the queen? 
The queen bee? Apparently my phone agrees that I'm the queen bee. A psychokinetic atta attack that can damage the physical world and disrupt a person's phoric system, causing permanent neural damage. Cybers are made of very condensed psi energy that is fired at high velocities. Some espers are capable of blocking them, particularly knights who specialize in shield techniques. Rooks are able to somewhat protect their bodies with physical enhancements. Most bishops can learn to block them as well, but for those who cannot block them, they can cause severe, possibly permanent, damage to synaptic pathways. A weak cyburst may only cause temporary pain and weakness, but a powerful one can kill on impact. Well, glad I'm immune to those. Besides the physical damage, they can severely disrupt the neural pathways of people who don't know how to block them. Does Caleb know how to block them? Caleb is a rook. His ability to physically enhance his body gives him a measure of resistance to this type of attack. Rook-ranked espers usually score somewhere between an 8 to 12 on the EA scale. They possess biokinetic abilities that allow for physical enhancements beyond normal capability, such as enhanced senses, strength, dexterity, or even processing and intelligence. I think we read about this with the guy who came after us. Yeah, okay, I do remember reading that one. Okay, so Caleb's also of the Rook variety. A measure of. That didn't sound very promising. Ari stopped walking and set his hands on my shoulders, leaning down to look earnestly into my eyes. Morgan, you must hide. What? She and the others are targeting you. We had hoped to retrieve you before the other factions found you or moved in, but we underestimated them. What does that even mean? Listen to me. I am unsure who's outside at the moment, but someone is interfering with our connection to the net. I've been trying to call for backup, but I cannot connect. For now, I need to retrieve Caleb. In the worst case, I will get the three of us to safety. It's better for them to know who we are than for you to fall into their hands. Find a safe place to hide until we come for you. He turned away, but I grabbed his sleeve. You're wrong. All of you. You're wrong about me. You are the one who is wrong. Then tell me who you are. Are you- We'll explain everything soon. You have my word. Be safe, Morgan. And with that, the space in front of me distorted slightly and he vanished. Great, now I'm in a haunted... Asylum? School? I don't know where I am. Doesn't look very inviting, though. I sagged against the wall, unsure if I should be relieved or terrified now that I was alone. From the sound of it, fighting was intensifying on all sides. I... didn't know what to do. Whether it was because we didn't go far, or because I had already done it once, the effects of the second jump hadn't been as bad as the first. I felt shaky, but that was more from being shot at than teleporting again. But I was glad for a few seconds to stop and collect my thoughts. Where do I go now? I didn't want to hide only to be caught by Ari and Caleb later on. Just because the other people searching for me were also terrifying didn't mean I would choose to go with them quietly. I clenched my jaw and continued down the corridor the way Ari and I had been going. There was very little light fl filtering in, and it was creepy as hell. But I wouldn't have a chance like this again. While they were occupied, I needed to get as far away as I could. I couldn't afford to be cautious now. If I could make it outside, I could figure out how to get away from it all. I would get home again. Somehow. Broken glass crunched under my feet as I walked, but the sounds of fighting faded a bit as I went deeper into the building. I wasn't sure where I was going. My father had worked in places like this, though. Hopefully less collapsed places. Based on having been in a few similar buildings, I figured I would find emergency exits at the far end of this main hallway. There might be some in the rooms I passed, but I didn't want to corner myself in one of those. Just in case. In the meantime... My mind was swirling with questions. And uncomfortable theories. Caleb had mentioned a queen. Or rather, he'd clearly called me that. A queen, huh? 
That they somehow thought I was a queen-ranked Asper might explain their actions, somewhat. Aspers were rare, less than 2% of the population. And of those, even fewer hit the upper ranks of the EA scale. Queens and kings were the two rarest ability types. Less than 1% of espers held those ranks. Far less. But... I had never once demonstrated telekinesis on the level of something like a queen rank. Based on the skills I'd exhibited, I always assumed I was on the lowest rungs. To have them thinking I was a queen. What would cause them to assume that? The window thing? That couldn't be it. Shattering a window was basic telekinesis. Something even a pseudo-esper might be able to do if they were panicked. Besides, Ari had already been nearby when that happened. A coincidence? Or had they already been watching me? Had that whole incident been planned? A way to test my abilities or something? But that still didn't really answer why. And if it had been a test, breaking a window should have failed me right away. It was hardly an impressive feat of sigh. Yet somehow, if Ari was to be believed, several factions had homed in on me as a potential queen? And what factions, anyway? Endgame was the one usually sweeping up stray espers. I couldn't imagine them shooting at people, though. I mean, they were essentially a vast army of high-ranking espers. Could Ari and Caleb be from Endgame? But why not just say so? Though I suppose I probably wouldn't have believed them if they'd claimed it. Ugh. I didn't know. How could I come up with any solid answers based on the limited information I had? I couldn't. So, for now, getting away from this madness was my priority. With knights who could pop in and out of shadows, or wormholes, and who even knows what other abilities, I wouldn't feel safe until I was far, far away from all these people. And even then, maybe not. They literally kidnapped me off the street in broad daylight, and no one noticed! What could you do to fight against something like that? And Ari had mentioned some kind of interference with the net. I... I hadn't even tried to call for help since we arrived. Too much happened all at once. But, sure enough, when I went to pull up my interface and connect to the safety department, there was nothing. One of the factions out there had enough clout to put up some kind of widespread interference with the nanosystem. That was insane. It wasn't like just anyone could do that. Endgame? Crimson? Groups of that caliber, sure. Or the government. Ugh, I was in so deep over my head I didn't know if I'd ever be able to claw my way back out. There was a lump of panic growing in my throat, but I tried to swallow it down. I... I could not go to pieces. I absolutely could not. Just focus on one thing at a time. Trying to think about everything at once would get me nowhere. I locked my eyes on the cluttered ground and just tried to pick a careful path through the dark halls. I took slow, deep breaths. Except for the debris, the place was gutted. Offices and other rooms were empty, doors hanging open on broken hinges. The walls were scorched and some doors twisted and burned. An ugly reminder of the escalation that led to last year's attack. And now it was under attack again, for a different reason. A soft scuffle of movement in a room to my left caught my attention. I froze, eyes wide, as I tried to stare into the darkness there. I immediately thought of that lady in black slinking through the shadows the way she did. Oh. Interesting. Um... I'm lacking of a confident? Oh, yeah. I'm not confident because I'm cautious. Ha ha ha. I forgot about that. Um, I can either run back the way I came or ask, um, who's there? <laughs> uh... I mean, it could be a rat. I, I don't, well, I don't know. Could be like a space rat. I don't know what kind of animal situation we got going on on this planet. Um,. If I go back the way I came... Okay, I mean, neither of these are things I need to pick for the common route, so I'm on my own for this one. Do I do the 
stereotypical horror movie trope of hello <laughs> and then get stiffy stabbed i could get stiffy stabbed you know what i'm gonna leave it up to the coin the coin can tell me if i'm gonna get stiffy stabbed okay coin heads i'm running back tails no actually tails i'm running back with my tail between my legs heads i'm gonna be like hello all right here we go hiya heads all right hello who who's there i regretted speaking as soon as the words were out of my mouth my voice was hardly more than a croaking whisper but it sounded so loud in that quiet corridor and what did i expect a name an introduction kindly directions on the way out so stupid for someone so confident i'd ace that exam from yesterday i really was an idiot there was no answer not right away but a dark shape shuffled out of that room definitely a person though i couldn't see them clearly at first i took a wary step backward trying to decide if i should try to run past them or run back the way i'd come it was a bit late to find somewhere to hide i heard a raspy whisper that made my stomach drop how oh god it's that guy again <laughs> I assume. I mean, the way this is written, I assume it's that crazy dude again. Oh, God. Well, sure. The whispers crawled in me, like snakes that stole my soul. I can hear him strangling all the light with his eyes. His eyes are everywhere, in me, and they want to be in you. How? How can you be here? I'm everywhere now, all inside everything, except in you. My voice can't reach that far yet, but it will once it's gone. When it dissolves, one voice, just one, dissolving in the sea of eyes. What happened to you since the last time we met? Goodness gracious, you went totally vampire on me. Well, that can only mean good. The figure stepped into a patch of light that filtered in from somewhere. My breath caught in my throat. The person in front of me was... exactly who I thought it was. The man from the alley. The one who had attacked me. It was him, but he was different. Changed. Looks like he got some fade going on. Ghostly skin. And a strange gold light shining from his eyes. I didn't understand what I was seeing. What could possibly change someone like that? Drugs didn't do that to you. Nothing should be able to do that to you. I know you. Y yes We met before. They know you. He found you because of me. Or he found me because of you. He found us all the same. And now we're going to fall into the eyes and disappear. You could have... You could have... Saved... Me. Why didn't you save me?! He rushed at me, mouth twisted open, eyes wide and gleaming in the faint light. But even as he caught and pinned me to the wall, I was certain I saw tears wetting his face. I wanted you to save me, to take me to the stars. And now, now I'm gone. There's nothing left. What could have happened to this man? Uh, I'm really not either of these things. I feel like... It's like he's a shell of his former self. I mean, he's strong. I... I really didn't have much su success getting away from him last time. 
All right. Coin again. Um, heads, reason, tails, fight to get away. Hiya! Okay, we're going for the heads again. Listen, my dude, this ain't you. What? What happened to you? They found me. They... They found me and swallowed me. You said... You said... I could save you. He stopped for a moment, as if confused. Then the music switched. Then abruptly let me go, stumbling backwards away from me. I'm here now. I can... I can help you now. He clutched at his head with a low moan, rocking it side to side. <laughs> it's too late. It's too late now. His voice won't stop. It's never too late. I said it, but I wasn't sure. He looked up at me with agony-filled eyes, and my heart broke at that sight. I reached a hand out towards him. Let me help you. I can- No! <laughs> Not again, ah man. He screamed and lunged at me. I tried to dodge, but he was too fast. He caught me around the throat, slamming me against the wall. A choked cry escaped, but was cut off as he squeezed my neck. I clawed at his hands, kicking my feet as he lifted me up off the ground. Oh god! Bl please You can't help me! You can't! He's... His voice! The eyes inside my head! Everywhere! They want you! They... They'll devour you! Like they're devouring me! They... They're eating up my brain. Until I'm... I'm gone. Until there's nothing left. You're not... gone. You're... right here. I reached out with a trembling hand, fingertips brushing his cheek. There was a strange jolt when I touched him, tingling that started in my fingertips and spread up my arm. The man looked at me with confusion. Terror. What... what's your name? Then his eyes went wide, and his hands slacked. He released me, and I hit the floor, legs too weak and shaking to hold me up. I coughed violently as I gulped in air. The man staggered away from me, choking out a low, shuddering moan. One hand to my throat, trying to swallow, I got to my feet. I didn't know what to do. Leave him, or... His eyes came back! Amazing. Rory. What? My name is... is Rory. I'm... I'm Morgan. His eyes darted around as if he wasn't even sure where he was. He stared down at his hands, then at me. There was something in his face. A clarity that hadn't been there before. Morgan. You should leave. Get out of here. There are... There are others lurking. If you stay, they'll catch you. Come with me. We can go... No! No. I'll... I'll hold them off. He gave me a gut-wrenching smile. It's the least I can do. I'm... I'm sorry. No. I don't want that. You really did save me this time. Thank you. Lifesaver. A little compassion goes a long way. Yay! I'm so glad that that coin flip worked out. I'm so sad now. I'm like, oh, poor Rory. Save Rory! There was a shuffling in the shadows. Not just one set of footsteps, several. Hurry! Go! But you- Go! I stumbled backwards, and with a final parting look, I fled back the way I'd come. I hadn't actually gotten very far into the corridor. Not as far as I thought I had, anyway. 
I reached the opening that led to the main atrium in what seemed like almost no time at all. The silence out there was... unnerving. I hadn't realized it as I ran, but as I paused near the door with one hand resting on the wall to catch my breath, the sounds of fighting had stopped. What was I even doing back here? I was supposed to be getting away. But with that man back there, it felt like I was hemmed in by enemies. Unsure if I was being pursued or what I should do, I peered carefully into the atrium. My eyes went wide. There were... bodies. Not just one or two. I could only assume the people from outside had gotten inside at some point. They were strewn about and I didn't know if they were unconscious or dead. And one of them was familiar. Caleb! Oh no, Caleb, did I get you killed in the common route? I'm sorry! Oh, okay, no. He was... He was alive, moving and struggling to sit up. That woman in black was just in front of him, her foot connected with his jaw, sending him slumping back to the floor. I let out an involuntary cry, good job, and her head whipped around to me as I clapped my hands to my mouth. Too late, she definitely spotted me. She held a hand out and I knew what was coming. The air in front of me warped as I saw something released from her palm. Oh, Ari's all beat up. No, my boy. And Ari was there, looking like he was barely standing as he held his arms up to block with one of his shields. What I could only assume was a sigh burst. Why did you return? I... Someone attacked me. He looked back and reached out with one hand, then crumpled to the ground. Ari, no! And the woman was right behind him. I backed away, heart drumming against my ribs like I was ready to jump out of my chest. No! She simply kicked Ari's unconscious form to the side like he was nothing as she came towards me. I didn't want this. I didn't want any of it. I wanted to go home. I wanted my normal life. The woman reached for me. I covered my head, ducking lower as if I could shield myself from her. Don't touch me! I screamed the word, and from somewhere deep inside, that scream just built and built and ripped its way out of me with enough force it felt as though I was ripping my throat open. It was like my own voice echoed inside my head over and over. There was a rumble and shattering glass. Steel bent, broke. Rubble was falling. Everything was falling. And then reality twisted. Are we on the night side of the planet? Cold air hit me, and I was running. 